morning folks uh, I'm going to do a well, something on here landscape <coughs> it's a piece of uh, three millimeter MDF primed with uh, titanium white gesso with some burnt umber mixed in and a cedar coat of, uh, of PVA glue uh, just thought I'd show you these this artist here sorry about the glare uh, this is Trevor Chamberlain. Trevor Ch these are watercolours. He's a member of way if he's still alive, I haven't seen him for a while, but um, he's a member of the Wapping Art Group. I've mentioned the Wapping Group before. They apart from everything else, they, they paint they specialise in painting along the Thames between Towerbridge and Rotherhithe. And they meet at the Prospect of B Pub, very famous. I think uh, prisoners used to be uh, tied, chained to the uh, pier outside the pub and the tide would slowly come in and drown them. Very nice. But this beautiful diffusion he gets in his paintings, absolute master, self-taught, better like me really, but uh, with far more ability than I have, but a superb, superb artist. I'll show you another superb artist. His name's Dave Usher. And this one I'm going to base a painting on. It's lovely working from your own work. Free from photographs, free from uh, influences for other artists. I only keep these for reference, the uh, catalogues. Uh, oh yes, if, if for those of you that haven't in America haven't seen the UK version of Antiques Roadshow some time ago. You have to search for it now, it was on the, one of the iPlayers, as I, um, and I've seen it twice, it, it, Seagull's paint box came up for sale. Edward Seagull, the great Edward Seagull, the great landscape painter of our, the 20th century Norfolk artist in East Anglia. Uh, an absolutely marvellous painter, and, and during the war he was a... Uh, well, he worked with Royal Engineers, but he was, uh, I think he was doing camouflage. But uh, he had a bad heart, so he, he couldn't go fighting or anything. But he was um, a, um, a war artist with General Alkinlek. And uh, and the box was, uh, the, the address on the inside of the box was for a, a, a place in, I think, Egypt or... I don't know, North Africa somewhere, and it was valued at about £1,500, but I'm sure Seiko fans would, would pay a lot more for it. I've been to a number of Seiko exhibitions in London, and I know he's of his time, and he, he didn't do go towards abstraction, but he had this wonderful ability to paint landscape. But he could paint anything. He painted the Queen, I believe and uh, went to America, he painted portraits of horses and prized bulls and that sort of thing. Anyway, uh, we'll base something on here. Uh, I painted this about a year ago probably. I've got my titanium white, there's, there's the uh, Griffin and the Winton student quality. So between them they, they mix and I will mix them and they help all the other colours to dry that they mix with. Cadmium red, ultramarine, burnt, burnt sienna, viridian, cadmium yellow, and yellow ochre. We'll see how we get on. I'm going to. I'm hoping to use viridian more. It's quite hard to say that. Viridian, viridian. Uh, it's a it's a blue green, very very strong, powerful, staining colour. So use it with discretion. It mixes very well. Mixes very well with ultramarine and white. Got a gorgeous uh, turquoise, turquoise mixed with uh, yellow ochre. You get a realistic uh, grass green, and with cadmium yellow pale, you get some very bright greens. Provided you don't mix any dark colours like black or Payne's grey. I haven't got any Payne's grey on, but I scraped it off. So I wipe that on my towel. Okay, so we'll do a bit of a sketch first and just 
just base this on uh, Well, uh, I'm not sure I really want to do a river scene, but I suppose I haven't done one for a while, so... So... A bit of tree, the horizon, and the bank, the far bank, and coming towards us on here. I might put, I might actually put some uh, trunks in here just just to indicate them. But that's that's all we want. Um, we'll, we'll just guess all this and some reeds coming out here, going going over, bit of a bushes, stuff like that. Okay, well that's all I'm going to do for that. That's just the extent of my drawing ability. <coughs> We're going to paint over it anyway. Uh, right, okay, big inch flat brush. Um, I'm, I'm tempted to um, to paint the uh, the body of this first and leave the sky to last, rather than superimpose. But I don't suppose it really makes makes much difference, does it? No, I do, I'll, I'll go the way that I usually do. So I'll have a bit of blue, a good bit of blue, plenty of oil, so that it spreads. We're always getting a little bit, a bit tacky. I haven't cleaned it out. It's one of my, it's, it's a cap from uh, one of my beer mix uh, litre cans. I, I make my own beer. Just say I don't go to pubs. Well, we can't now. Well, they're opening outside only on, on Monday. Let's just get rid of some lumps on that. So I might. Well, our local Weatherspoon pub hasn't got a garden, so we can't go there. But there are a number of pubs locally that, but they're all far more expensive than than weather spoons. Just rough that in. Let's get some, some white in there. Just go over the edge of the drawing. Just a slight blue tinge to the uh, Clouds. I go back to there. Put some of that back. As you paint the the uh, the alkyd resin dryer will come in. Just clean my brush through the toweling. When the ferrules get a bit loose from all the rough treatment, uh, you just uh, eventually they, they loosen off and these little pins come out. Look, you see that? Come out of the ferrule. But I just bang in a couple of uh, three quarter inch veneer pins and cut them off to the right length when they come out the other side. That one's already coming out. And bend them over and whack them with a hammer. Alright, let's have a little bit of bit of um, red on the horizon and a bit of the ochre. But just a little bit. Variety. Can use burnt sienna. Something light to counter change the dark darkness of the trees. 
Okay, here we go. This brush is sort of probably the the um, linseed oil is is getting a bit tacky now after several days. I used to use um, round tobacco tins when I used to be a pipe smoker. Probably why I cough so much these days. Um, uh, we've always had an open fire, well, a fire with a burner, log burner, a multi fuel stove, which we light on very cold days and then we'll go in there in the front room and watch the telly around this log burner in the winter. No, we, but we used to, winter and summer we'd change, we'd change rooms, but we, don't, we can't be bothered in now so often. And I would, um, hold on, turn my radio down. Um, where was I? Oh yes, I, I put the tin lid in the fire. And uh, being flammable, well the material, the, old, the oil in it, but flammable, it would just clean them out nicely. Beautiful. All right, let's get a bit of ochre in there. I'm going to soften that just a little bit so we don't want too graphic around the around the edge, too finished. And we'll put mix a bit of red with that. Uh, get a little bit of a get a little bit of colour in there, a bit of shadow. Okay, well that's a start. We might put, I might put some stuff in there, another cloud maybe. Hmm. I might darken the top with the blue, get a really dark blue and maybe could put a bit of light blue in here. There's not a bit of burnt sienna in there. Slabby. Okay, just a little bit here. Right. I used to um, soften all the clouds, and, but but. Some clouds do have sort of a hard edge. Right now, uh, see if I can use another brush. I think I've used that enough for a moment. Um, I'll use this this rough brush. Look, it's and he's sticking in the ferrule. The ferrule is is the metal bit of the brush that holds the bristles and fixes to what it did fix. 
Uh, well, I'll sort that one out later. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll uh, stick it back in with the PVA glue. Okay, now we want some bluey trees, so let's get some blue, a bit of red. Okay, that'll do for that. I'll put some lighter stuff in there, so a little bit of yellow to that, I think. Just put a bit of that blue green in there. I need to probably come down a little bit with with that. I just let it dry off a bit. This is just a bit too too high. All right. Okay. So now let's make a, a green with the with the uh, that green and a bit of darker stuff on there. So I mean, it's a lovely grassy green. I'll put some uh, put some shadow in that. Let's make that a bit dark, a bit of red, and Put some shadow in the in the uh, to separate some of the uh, some of the banks where they're going to shadow, just to accentuate them a bit. Let's see if we put some stuff in there. Right, let's get some dark colour. Well, no, it's some light colour. Got to get your counter change. Right here, bit of white. If I can get away without showing uh, any uh, any trunks that I did on that one, that might uh, be sort of good. These sort of shadow areas in the in the uh, mass foliage. Look at that, nice and dark there. Okay, red and blue. So by putting the dark on, then you can superimpose over it with the lights. And you'll get your counter change with a bit of luck. Okay, we'll go back to that. Let's do a bit on the other side now. But really, I want to just... Oh, 
That was just a bit too high there. Just give that bit of a recession there. Let's do something here. So you don't have to detail with riggers and, and stuff. There are other ways of, of showing it with, with stipple, but mainly with the side of the brush. Okay, now then. Well, uh, let's add a bit of burnt sienna to that, to that mix. And that. Oh, okay, let's get a different sort of green because we're on the other side of the river. Some, get a bit of dark in here that we can counter change against with that lovely yellow or that lovely green Right, now we want the uh, darks, red and blue. A bit of, bit of, uh, bit of oil, help it flow. What I'm trying to do here is create the illusion of detail, rather than make, it, make everything into a model of a branch or a twig. Let's get that dark across here. Right, I'm just trying to put some river in. Now we've got light, nice light on the horizon here, so so let's just get the basis of those that that. Well, just do it. I'll have to use a bit of a, a finer brush. Let's get some blue in now. Let's get that in. Because what I'm going to do is to come down like that. I'll put some colour into that in a minute, but I'm just sort of showing you. We need to put in some banks.
Gets in a bit of light there. Bit of dark I think we have to put there. And then right back to that brush. Start to put in a bit of That's a nice pretty green. I hope to finish this within the hour. Bit of, bit of warm burnt sienna. Now, try something here. A bit of viridium, a bit of ultramarine, a bit of white. Got a little bit of a bit of blue green here and there. Sort of willow tends to, or like willow saplings tend to have a sort of a, a bluey, misty tinge to them. And they grow all along the river Wandle Bank. Add some light in here. So you can make darts without using paint spray.
Right, let's, uh, let's finish more of this bank here. Alright, you see what happens by putting a bit of a bit of the background of the sky in sky reflection and just drag down, drag across. Just do that so you're satisfied. Well I'll use this smaller brush I think. Now we've got this lovely light ochre colour from the clouds, so let's uh, carefully just Where did that come from? I didn't clean my palette well enough. Oh, the blue. down or we'll check across first and drag some of those colours down now into that water. Now we're create, starting to create, I've just learned this technique really, after all these years, you see you never stop learning. Right, let's get some nice Not too much of that yet. of dark green in there.
Right, well, uh, put some pretty lights in there, I think. Let's just get this uh, done over here now. Put it in the dark. Foregrounds do quickly if you can get them out of the way because we're looking that way. I've got to do something with there. Right, we're going to get some dark back in there now. In here. To get that counter change again. Let's uh, let's mix a bit of red with that, and we'll get some 
so dark in here. It really mixes very well with that uh, alizarin, but I haven't got any on the, on the palette. I just want this. See if we can go the darker blue there. Get a bit of that cloud in there. Right. Now we've got a lot of movement in the water so I'm not going to do much more than that. I like just to get a bit of dark in here. Okay, well I don't think I could do much more than that. I probably forgot to be even down there. Uh, just bring this out a little bit. Oh, well, there we are. We've got a river, haven't we? All right, let's just take that off. Go away, if I pass it, I I'll go shopping. I've got to go get a few things a little. Right. So that one, that one's got to be stuck. Is that the one I was using? Oh, yeah, they've both got to be stuck. I'll give them a wash first. In dish, dish washing up liquid. All right, well, I hope you enjoy that. 
Well, actually, I don't think I've got a... I haven't got a... a uh, amount for that. Oh, I have here. No, that's too small. Sort of. Don't look too close to it, folks. Let's move over the sensor. Oops. Right, I, I could. Oh, it's a river. Hope you like it and I'll see you soon. Thanks for looking in. Bye bye.